Hello everyone, it's Mekasan here, and we finally have it here. I've been waiting for this here as a chance to talk to you about everything. It's the launch trailer for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, as of this recording here, review copies have gone out to many people, not just like IGN and uh, Game Radar, GameStop, whatever, but also like YouTubers here, Joe Raptor, Welshi, a bunch of other people they've been playing it i've seen some footage at the beginning here some of the modern day sec uh, early modern day segments here yeah my curiosity got the better of me i've seen some of the tips and tricks here where the game does not tell you videos and everything i am excited for this game i pre-ordered it for playstation 5 which if you've seen uh, my reaction to the miles morales spider-man launch trailer you know that I will be getting that until way, way later, so it's going to be a little difficult to avoid a spoiler and such. But I got a few things here. This game, everything we've seen, has pretty much thrown people for a loop, but mostly negative-wise here, and not just uh, the uh, Assassin's Creed fan like me, but also the common, uh, uh, just casual players here who are not invested in the story. However, after everything, time go, going by, theories and such, everything settled down, cleared my head, I realized a few things here. And this is something I wish to share with, I wish to share with you guys. Now, a lot of this game, I can compare it to the marketing for Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Or just the game in general. For example... One of the biggest, dumbest complaints I've heard is how, wait, how, how can Layla's animus allow her to relive memories that are not her genetic bloodline or anything like that? It's like, are we all just forgetting Black Flag? At all? Like, uh, did we just erase that from our memories? Because in that game, we played an intern who was going through the genetic memories of one now deceased Desmond Miles. In fact, in the third game, Assassin's Creed 3, if you talk to William Miles after you save him from Abstergo and, and such, he talks about how the Templars have been working on the technology to allow other people, anyone, to just sit through uh, genetic memories that are that's not them, so anyone can do it. Heck, if you actually go out of simulation in AC4 and hack computers, you see recordings of the project. Just look up the surrogate initiative. It's right there. They've been working on the means to have it so anyone can sit through people's memories, genetic, genetic or otherwise, with just since the 1980s. They hit a, they've hit a dead, a bit of a roadblock here which delayed it, but yeah, they perfected it, and Layla was part of the team. And the animus she has... Was a fee was Abstergo made for uh, the field for on-site research and such like that. So, yeah, it's a model designed to do just that to allow uh, a, an on-site agent to live out the, the memories of a bot of DNA of whoever they found in the field, whether it be an ancient corpse like Aya and uh, Bayek, and in this case Avor here. And so, I don't see the problem. So yeah, that complaint is just faulty and collapsed from the get-go. The other complaint, and I kind of shared this as well here, was how the marketing of the game focused more on the Vikings than the Assassin. But then I remember the marketing of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, where, yes, it focused more on the pirate aspect than the Assassin. I mean, hell, you had Blackbeard actually singing your praises here, saying how what an incredible pirate you are. And another thing that you complain about here is how Eivor is not an assassin, he's a Viking. It was the same thing with Edward Kenway. He was not an assassin. I mean, yes, he had the robes, and he had the hidden blade. But he, like, stole those robes and was given the hidden blade by the Templars. Because he was impersonating a, a traitor, an assassin traitor. He he was not an assassin until like 
what, 80 and 85% of the game, as, as we are into the main story of the game here, when he finally raised the assassin Jolly Roger? I mean, Adewale joined the assassins earlier than Kenway. Everyone was all about just making money, profiting. Being, being a pirate privateer here, he, he made deals with the Grand Master of the West Indies, and the other assassins did not like him, for good reason. The only difference between this marketing and Black Flag is that Black Flag did touch somewhat on the assassin element. While um, Valhalla here doesn't touch the combat at all, other than the hidden blade, which not so hidden. He, I mean, Eivor wars it Daria style, which, okay. But yeah, it, it, it's clearly they're going with something similar to that here, where Eivor will join the assassins later on, if, uh, or maybe he won't. Maybe she, maybe, he, maybe she won't. And now for one of the complaints I got here. Okay, so... You guys know, it's pretty much universally known, that the fandom did not like the whole selecting gender. Like, do you play as Alexios or Cassandra? Because of the damaged DNA. Yeah, that was dumb. And you know what else? The Legacy of the First Blade DLC made it even more stupid. Like, this was something forced on. Because, and spoiler alert, spoiler alert for the ending of The Hidden Blade. Like, so if you haven't played that DLC yet, like, mute this or stuff, or just skip to the reaction, whatever, just find a timeline video. But in the ending of The Legacy of the Hidden Blade, we learn that Aya slash Amonet is a descendant of, well, the player character from Odyssey, either Cassandra. So... Yeah, in Origins, we got a sample of Aya's DNA here. So when we, so with the DNA we had that was on the uh, spear of Leonidas, it's like, what? The computers couldn't like find a match here. It's like, hey, wait a minute, this DNA here has a partial match to uh, Aya's DNA. So genetically related. Yeah, you see the problem there? So yeah, that that was just dumb. Now, here, however, there's a theory behind this here, is that there are the two binds here, like how male and female Eivor are canon. The theory is that in the Viking era here, the Viking times here, female Eivor, we play as female Eivor, but when we take a trip down to the uh, realm of the gods here, things are a little drug trip, slash probably uh, memory, a genetic... Uh, coding memory in our DNA because Isu science are like that. We play as a male Eivor. I don't know if this is fact or fiction here. I avoided uh, that here. I haven't seen any gameplay of being in the realm of the gods or the giants or whatever, so I, I don't know. But the comic, I read the first comic, and it shows that it's female Eivor, and we have this seer who sees both. And in some of the uh, modern day stuff, even Rebecca mentions how this DNA sequence is dense, like it's two minds in one. So, yeah, I, I can't wait to learn more here, but that's all I learned from it. I avoided much, and that's all I gotta say. So, I'm okay here. Other than that here, the usual problems is the open world segment. I'm tired of those. Give us back, like, uh, tight, condensed, congested Cities like uh, Unity or uh, Syndicate. <laughs> Without further ado, let's uh, finally watch this. I'll just lower the volume a bit here and... Okay, it's male Eivor. Eivor. Just... I mean, I, I can sort of... Will your mother laugh okay. I can sort of see why they uh, are doing this here to throw us off. Something to fight for. But here's the thing, they could have intermingled this stuff, this scene here, with scenes of male and female Eivor to further throw us off here, so we don't know which is which. But your greatest journey still lies ahead. Drop that gorgeous. Let's go. Let's 
times capture a kingdom. Roar and bloody success. Yeah, I also know that we'll learn that there was an assad, there was a hidden one's bureau uh, here, but they were like evicted and from L England. And go, Eivor. Claim your place in Valhalla. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stunning, beautiful, beautiful. All right, it's all good. These are the big ones here, but available now. The hardcore fans, which I trust more, they all say it's pretty damn good. I do like what we saw, mostly gameplay stuff here, uh, with some uh, obviously uh, in-game engine cinematics here, uh, but no uh, no UI or anything like that. And again, though, I I gotta give points off to Ubisoft uh, management, not the game, just management here like my idea of you could have just had it so different scenes intermin uh like you have some scenes with uh male and then scenes with female avor to throw us off you're like which is canon even though if the theory is right here the parts in the, grel the realm of the myth of the mythical realms that's when we go male avor and i'm okay with that that's perfect like a little animus strip there via drugs <laughs> Yeah, I also like this. I also the, the I also heard that there is a lot of nods and stuff like that to the main lore, but basically it feels like while the assassins in Order of the Ancient always do things in the background here, and this is this stuff here what Avor is doing is a lot of foreground stuff. So makes me wonder while Avor is doing all that, what are the assassins doing here, trying to as they slowly start con as the uh, Raven Clan starts conquering land, start taking place and stuff like that, and start and Avor kills some members of the or the Ancients here. I can see assassins slowly moving in, and we don't we, we just don't know about that. They're keeping that dust secret. The only uh, obvious thing is the, is the assassin, Assassin's Bureau in the settlement of Ravens Ravens Torp or whatever it's called. So yeah, like again. I, I have heard good things from the hardcore fans. So that fills me with hope. I'm still not a fan of the dialogue trees. That's got to go. But like I, like I said in a previous video here, I feel that this game is the Ub Ubisoft trying to put Assassin's Creed Back on back on the path, like it's but it's gotta climb up a hill to get on the road because it went sort of out. It went sort of like off the track with Origins and just spiraled down the hill with Odyssey here. So this feels like it could be a U-turn from what I'm from what I've heard as they slowly try to get back on the proper path here. I mean, again, they got more modern day stuff here. We see Sean and Rebecca. I've seen how they look like in the modern day here. Wow. Times have changed them. I mean, it has been years since we've seen them. We haven't seen them since Syndicate. When they killed that uh, inner sanctum Templar bitch. So, yeah, they've, they've, they've changed here and I... That makes sense. <sighs> but yeah, I, I really, really hope that the next game is a true return to form to Assassin's Creed. And again, I, I'll have to wait for this game to come out. Wait for this game here and have it in my pile because I won't get a PS5 anytime soon. But I am excited. I'm excited here. I've heard good things so far from the mainline fans. Not really anything bad yet here, but no doubt that will start coming out now that the game's available for everyone. But I will try to avoid any spoilers and such. A difficult task because it is YouTube, it's the internet here, and I gotta wait like a year. Yeah, well, so yeah, everyone. Thank you for watching. 
tell me what you all thought about this. Those of you who got an early copy, those of you who had expectations here, what did you think about all this? What did you think about what I said in the beginning here, my theories and such? Please share your thoughts in the comment sections down below. I want to hear them. And of course, I will respond to anyone who, if it's worthy of response, if I can have a conversation here. And of course, you can join my Discord for you, you can carry it out further. So until then, this is Mekasan, and I'll see you guys next time.